Hey everybody, welcome to episode 10 of the Real Truck Nation podcast. Thanks for tuning in. On this episode, we talk about our dream builds that we're gonna build with our GameStop profits. To the moon! You feel me, guys? By the way, speaking <laughs> of those window visors. All right, everyone. Welcome to the Real Truck Nation podcast, episode 10. Uh, I'm your host, Forrest, and Chris is back and joining us with Dustin. So, we're... Uh, we're Couldn't keep you down Chris. forever. Mm -mm. Glad yeah, we tried back. to get rid of you, but, you know... No, but Clay was good. Clay, Clay was good. We'll have we'll have Clay I, back, I, but we'll have to have you back with Clay. Yeah, if I had Maybe to kick Dustin out, or yeah, I'll, I can take. We him. might be able to get four people. I might be a little busy. You can bench me for uh, for a, a show. I'd well, we that. said we were going to, and then I got. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know how that okay backfired. With that. But... Keep you guessing around here on this podcast. Yeah. But uh, so we're gonna we're gonna kick it off as usual with the with some of the latest news. So um, finally, some news. Finally, some news. We've been a little dry on news for a while, but. Uh, if those of you who haven't seen, we've had some new truck releases. So we have the new uh, the new Raptor was released by Ford. So Ooh. you guys saw that Did release, that I assume. Mm -hmm. yep. Not a lot of info on it. Not, not as much info as I was hoping, but it yeah. just turns out probably not going to be that big of a change, that big of an update. Not, but the, but then right again, off, not right off the bat. How do you improve on perfection is the question. <laughs> That's... This episode is sponsored by Ford. <laughs> uh, every, every episode we've done is somehow sponsored by Ford. At this point, we talk about them every time. Yeah, we should change focus at some point, but not this point. Well, they keep coming out with all the fun new stuff. And I'm, so. a, I'm a Ford guy. Don't hang you are. You're yeah. a fanboy. But uh, yeah, it's not, it's not horribly different. I mean, of course, it's going to follow the same premise that a Raptor has always been, right? The F-150 Raptor that has uh, the larger fenders, larger suspension... Uh, a little bit nicer interior, some differences there. So they they kind of continued with that, just bumped it up a little bit, bumped it up a hair. I've heard some people were disappointed with the release and might have expected more. Um, I don't think I'm necessarily disappointed with it. I mean, it's pretty much what I expect, right? It's it's the new 21, uh, 2021 uh, F-150 front end or body, I guess yeah. you could say. Um, they've bumped it up a little bit. I think the interior looks nice. The seats are a little bit the more different. The interior looks incredible. I was... Well, it looks like it has a lot of the features of what, like the platinum or King yeah. Ranch level, trim levels. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Almost like a limited, but like the bucket seat, because they always kind of keep that like race seat kind of mm -hmm. thing. Uh, I think that looks, I think that looks really neat. Um, they stuck with the, the upgraded Fox suspension, but upgraded that a little bit. Uh, you're able to option up to 37s. Mm -hmm. Now, which I mean, that's pretty big. On our on our uh, shop Raptor, we had a leveling kit. It's a 2017. We put yep. a leveling kit on it, and then 37s. I'll tell you right now, things big. Yeah, looks it's and beefy. it looks good. Looks it really looks good. really good. But imagine getting that from factory. Also, I mean, the fact that you can clear 37s on a factory height truck. I mean, that means wild. that yeah. means all you have to do is add a little bit more, and now you're clearing what 40s. You know what I mean? They yeah. mean business. That's all. Yeah, so there were uh, there's some small updates like that. Um, you can get the generator option, which would really, be pretty cool you, for a, an off-road vehicle. Right, that's yeah, where you want it. Right? Absolutely. Yeah, I, I saw the uh, saw it had plugs in the back. I didn't see that much information on it. The the things I was researching had very little info. Yeah, it, it more just seemed like a like a facelift Raptor, two, two kilowatt. That's pretty awesome. Yep, two kilowatt generator in it. So they're not changing it too much. They're just kind of adding some uh, some sprinkles on top of the yeah. icing. Yeah. So yeah, I would say I would I would categorize it as a very good refresh. Yes. Yeah. I, think um, so. I wouldn't say that I was disappointed with what I saw. Um, you know, the most notable things to me were the optional thirty sevens, and then they went to a coil spring rear suspension, mm -hmm. which is probably going to yep. be a, a much better ride and much better performance off road, but. I don't know that given all the other exciting things we've seen lately, um, you know, from people like Ram with mm. the TRX, like, I don't know if it was enough to really make me excited about the Raptor again. Yeah. Um, you did, know, because they've been really quiet about the engine options, right? It didn't make you go, wow. I mean, yeah, it's a good facelift. Now, if the TRX didn't exist, I'd go, yep, that's exactly what they yep. should have done. Well, you guys like, saw the information really about the Raptor R, right? They, well, uh, I didn't see much about it, but I, yeah. I heard the there words is going to be. One. I mean, it has an it. R. It has an R attached to it, so you know it's going to be great. Yeah, I mean, they, if they, it, if, te they teased it a little bit, if and, it ended, uh, they they did confirm its existence. They obviously <laughs> didn't say what it's going to be about, but if you know anything about the Mustang and the GT500, then it could be rocking the same motor as that one. 
And at they, that which point, we've been talking about that for a while. It does. I, I have read reports that the Raptor R is supposed to be getting a V8, which a lot of people have been asking for for a while. And so why would they a put a V8 in it V8. if it's not going to have more horsepower than the TRX? And then at that point, it's well, just that's probably be, why they haven't said anything yet. At that know. point, it's going to be a waste can, of time. How much? How much horsepower do the TRX have again? Seven hundred two. And the and the the Mustang has seven hundred and sixty. Which obviously, if they put, took that motor and put it in there, it's probably not going to be a, a carbon copy. But it's seven hundred two. Probably going to be super similar. And it's a big jump. There's no way Ford's going to put an R on the in the on the name badge of a Raptor Ford and not be able made to beat that. Factory options above 700 what do you mean the the f-150 shelby super snake oh yeah 750 is it well there you go 750 and that didn't get nearly as much hype as the trx that's a 5.0 coyote with a pretty large supercharger on it Mm -hmm. and then they give it a little bit more fuel and change up just a little a few things mostly tuning but the 5.0 can handle it yeah, no, absolutely. So we know that the 5.0 can handle it and still be offered with the same warranty. So what if they just do that? I mean, the Mustang one, uh, they could if they did the 5.0 because I know the Mustang is a 5.2 liter. But I mean, yeah, like you said, they are they already made a over 700 horsepower 5.0. So I mean, it's it's definitely possible. But that's still such a large jump considering the, the last generation uh, Raptor was at what, 450 horsepower. Yeah, I think so. 450, yeah. 450, <clears throat> or 450, 460, something like that. To go from that to 750, that's pretty large. That's oh, that's huge. And I think they're doing a good it's job dangerous of dangerous off road. I think I think because the the Raptor's been so successful for them, I think they don't want to they don't want to break that. They don't want to lose that mojo. So they're just doing the facelift, doing the doing the refresh, like you're saying. But then they're obviously also going out for the competition with well, the uh, with this Raptor R. Uh, uh, I mean teasing. the TRX. They literally put a T Rex eating a Raptor on the. On the engine cover, oh. so they have to. How funny would that? They be have if to. This sw- ends up just beating that. They have to swing big. I think if they, now, uh, I, I if the R also, becomes a reality, I, I should also, I should also say, horsepower isn't everything. If the oh, if, no. if, Ra- if Raptor comes out with, uh, I bet something I bet that's, the- that's seven oh five. I'm not going to say, oh, that's it. You know, Raptor wins. You know, I, that's not. Don't you know how the internet works, though? That is how the internet <laughs> works, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> Bigger numbers. Yeah. Oh, it's got better tone capacity. I mean, I, I literally, for truck. the next conversation, I have a list of numbers just ranked <laughs> bi- just arbitrarily from biggest to smallest. And I'm not considering well, the anything current else. Raptor, I wouldn't doubt, drives better than the TRX currently. Maybe not, really maybe not quite as fast. Statements. There's no, I mean, there's no way, well, yeah, there's no way a I mean, V6 in a lighter truck is going to handle worse than a, a V8 and a massive truck. With a properly tuned suspension yeah, it has a for custom, the weight. Like, ah, fine-tuned suspension. Yeah, it no, makes a difference. You're still driving on the same dirt. The I mean, dirt trophy, the trophy trucks weigh like 10,000 pounds. What does that even mean? Dustin? It means that Dodge is going gonna, is gonna to plow through dirt like a train, and the Forge is going to float right across on top. That's okay, what, so if anybody listening has a T, like Trent, maybe if he, he actually gets a TRX, please bring it down so we can do a comparison. Trent won't get a TRX. <laughs> I mean, and that's what I want. I want to. I want like somebody a, else bring a TRX. Someone We're, make like a, a predetermined like one mile lap around the desert or something. Take both trucks out there. And see which well, we'll wins. we'll take it. We'll take them exactly where we took the Raptor when we got it. You did that video. Yeah, it was pretty deep sand. I was out there a I couple went, weeks ago, actually. So I was very can... timid during that during that video, though. I could have pushed it so much harder. Well, yeah, we'll, if, if someone we'll if someone has a TRX in the state of Florida, head we'll, us up. Yeah, I like it. We'll bring you on to talk about. Yeah, it. I mean, we could do a we could do a quarter mile through that just just dusty, deep, sandy road. Out, yeah, it's out in the pretty, There's more to it than that too. So, oh boy, but all, all, content other, all for days. other specs aside from the new Raptor, I love the way it looks. I love the new 2021. I'm facelift. A, I'm pretty neutral. I'm, <clears throat> I like I'm, I'm with Dustin on that. I like the the sharpness of the old headlights uh, and the contours of it kind of made it seem a little more, I don't know, Raptor, whatever that means. Yeah. But I, the, the new stuff is like a little bit blocky. Like I remember when the when I first saw the front end um, of the normal F-150, I just thought they took the, uh, what is it, the 08 to 10 F-250 headlights, reworked them a little bit and shoved them on an F-150. Because they're a little bit taller, have like this yeah. kind of a similar contour on the outside. Um, it looks actually, okay. I'm neutral. I feel like the new Raptor gives me gives off a little bit of Super Duty vibe. It does with that 
Yeah, the it's the mark. Light, it's kinda, the marker lights in the center, yes. like yep. in line with the headlight wraparound. It's not a bad thing though. Them kind of keeping all their, you know, the F series. No, I, looking that somewhere. looks I good. I mean, that the kind of like bracket headlight design when they introduced that on the Super Duties, I mm -hmm. thought it looked great. Oh, it's mm -hmm. also got a rigid industry fog standard. Yeah, that looked pretty sweet. Not bad. So good for them. Um, Give but, us a V8, uh, please. The next, uh, the 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 other new release has been the uh, the Nissan Frontier. First time they've changed the Frontier in 17, 17 years. years, 16 years? Since oh, it was introduced gosh. in 2005. Because I had an 07 and I thought it was solid, but now, I mean, you look at it now, it's like, that is an old design. Yeah. A good hey, one, just and like it's the, not expensive. It's a good truck. Just that's, like, been its, that's been its, um, you know, its foothold in the market is the fact that a, just like the it's Raptor, expensive and it's reliable. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> they, 17 well, years they need, straight they needed an update so we can do a, a quick poll like it or not a forest you're up first just from what you've seen so far um i like it it's futuristic for nissan <laughs> um i think the interior looks pretty hard like you could knock on everything inside of it which is fine I think the, the orange accents look nice. Um, it's got 310 horsepower over 3.8 V6, so that's pretty decent. Uh, better than the old one. Um, it's about the same dimension, so it's still going to be a you know pretty small midsize. My problem with it... I don't want to go too far. I have yeah, to pass it. Yeah, go ahead. What was the question? I Do you like it or not? It's fine. <laughs> it's just like the, I have, whatever. It's whatever. I'm super neutral to a lot of a lot of midsize trucks. Um, I like the Frontier just because they, I like Nissan in general because they do kind of stick with body styles for a while, and the sales numbers just stay flat for some reason. Like, <laughs> the, the Frontier, the best selling year was 2016, 11 years after it came out. Really? Yes. So, so like the, it's not like the Learned sales dipped or anything, but yeah, I'm super neutral to. I don't like the looks of any midsize trucks. I think that's probably my problem. That's offensive. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not a huge fan. Um, I think any of them. It, it'd probably be the GMC Canyon is my favorite. Um, but Nissan, it's it's fine. I do like it. It seems a little bit throwback to the hard bodies of uh, what was that 80s? I do 80s love and 90s. The old hard bodies. Yeah. So I I like the fact that I think they they took a little bit of inspiration from that. Otherwise, it's nice. I, I like it. it. The, so the, I'll the, say the, the interior the is extremely corny with the accents. And uh, well, the red, the red, and then, and then it's probably was... going to be a take it or leave it thing for most people, but I, I dig it. Yeah. But, yeah. uh, I will say, you know, kind of getting ready to talk about it. The more I looked at it and read about it and, you know, saw videos or whatever, the more I like it. Um, I will say though, I see like every current truck on the road in that design. It's like got the little drop in the front windows, like an F-150 mm -hmm. yeah. side profile and kind of fender flares kind of look like a Tacoma. Uh, the headlights I haven't pinned yet, but they look like lifted from somewhere. It looks like every truck smashed into one, yeah. but I think it looks good. I mean, so I'll say like, based on what I've seen, if I was in the market for a new truck, a midsize again, I'd be driving one. So my problem with it is typically, unfortunately, when I look at a truck like this, I, I'm trying to look for what about this release, what about this truck would make me buy a Frontier over a Tacoma, a Colorado. I'd imagine it'd be a price. Hasn't, hasn't it always been kind of like the value I'm option that still big, performs? I'm not a huge like Nissan guy in general, yeah. right? With Nissan trucks, you know, because a lot of your guy, it, it takes a lot to try to get your your guy who's owned a few Fords or owned a few Chevys, owned a few Rams. Something like that to be able to switch brands, you know, and and it's one thing maybe if you can get a Ford guy to a Chevy guy, but to switch a guy to a Nissan, I feel like that's a little bit harder to do. But when I'm comparing it to like a Tacoma Ranger, Colorado Canyon, I didn't really see anything that grabbed me. I and feel that so I feel that way about would make someone choose the Frontier over the rest. Yeah, I think a lot. So I'll just. From personal experience, when I bought mine, I w you know was looking at basically the Tacoma and the Frontier at the time, and mm -hmm. the seating position is very different in those two trucks. Like Toyotas, you traditionally sit; it seems like way closer to the floor. Uh, yeah, I noticed. Um, that. Which some people yeah. don't like. I didn't like it. Um, so when I drove the Nissan, I, I preferred just kind of the interior arrangement and the space that I had available. It felt more comfortable. So that's probably a big one. Um, 
Because, you know, beyond that, a lot of the specs are going to be pretty similar. I mean, within the segment, you know, there are definitely some trucks might be a bit underpowered compared to other ones. Um, I did find it interesting, though, that um, like the tow rating on the Nissan was a bit lower than the rest by like a thousand pounds. And it was like 6,700, I think. I'm not not sure of the Colorado two wheel drive diesels, like 7,700. Gotcha. Um, but uh, I heard something too that it was just kind of per- like they didn't care that it was a little bit lower because it basically kind of acknowledged that most people that buy mid-sized trucks aren't getting them to max out the towing yeah, capacity. Yep. So it really is kind of irrelevant. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's I true because I think breaker. if anyone's buying this, it's going to be someone who might want a, a tent in the back in the full-size cab as well. Because obviously, if you got if a you small get the, boat or trailer with a side-by-side yeah. on it, I mean, that's not It'd even close to 6,000 pounds. I mean, yeah, and because those because those tow ratings are also with the, with the smallest configuration possible with the regular cab. Yeah, you need the lightest truck. You need the lightest truck to get the maximum tow rating. Tow so, I mean, if anyone's buying these mid-size, I think they're going probably crew cab with uh, yeah. throwing some, some utility in the back. Yeah. And like you said, small boat, small trailer for... for um, so ATVs, guy who just needs ATVs. to throw some fire in the back. I don't think yeah. it's you know anything anything crazy. Um, I, they haven't released a price on the Frontier yet, although I almost I almost doubt it might come in under base prices for the uh, Tacoma and Colorado. I almost doubt it. It'll probably be in the same ballpark. Probably in the. I mean, I think it'll be a few thousand more. That's what I thought. I'd be I'd be surprised if it was way less. Or way more. I feel like it's going to be right there. I mean, they've kind of ridden that like lower priced wave for a while, but they were well, also, also selling an old truck. Right. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So you have so to, right? And, and now's their, their opportunity cost, to maybe make you their, know, their cost of money. manufacturing has probably incrementally went down over the over those years and things like that. And now that price is just sky. They kept the same frame, though. Kept the same frame. So they're still and then they're just going to reuse the uh, a different a different body and interior and stuff so they're they're i'm sure their cost of goods went up exponentially so i'm sure we're going to see that price increase a little bit but uh yeah i'd be surprised i'm i'm interested to see what happens with it you know because it's always been it's kind of been the under underdog right you know it'd be it'd be interesting to see if they try to try to really because if they go if they go super valuable they could try and take over the market and then raise the price later kind of like everyone else does i don't i don't see it being a uh uh category leader or anything i mean also i'm just looking at the titan the titan did not sell well mm-hmm. the titan did not did not do super great so it's kind of a they, weird they might have learned from that to go titan's kind of in a weird spot though. it's like <coughs> it is not a mid-size but not a full size <laughs> right, so yeah. you right. know maybe the tundra kind of falls in that same or used to kind of fall in that same boat um maybe not i mean you could probably now, argue that either way but full size full yeah. size well yeah i'm at Kind of, yeah, but before years that, ago, right, yeah, yeah, it was it was the size of Tacomas now. Yeah, basically. I think if uh, I would say if Nissan tried to push the price too far, I mean, once you're spending the money, like the reason not to buy a Tacoma is because they're way they're super expensive for a Tacoma, right. basically. So I, I feel like if I'm going to spend the money, I'm just going to go to what has been around for decades and just buy a Tacoma. Right, um, exactly. So it's well, going to be like Colorado Ranger pricing. If you got like Toyota a, pricing. if you got a, a completely base four cylinder Tacoma, you can get one for under twenty six thousand. Yeah, uh, who's? I mean, super, I'm not. That, I'm, not base. I, I'm not going to. I'm not arguing price. It's just like ah, that's not. But if you're talking about apples to apples, then. I don't want that. Right, that's the point. Sim- similarly configured. You got to give me crew cab four wheel drive <laughs> right. as a right. base. Yeah. Oh, well, this Nissan's forty thousand. I can go get a Tacoma for twenty six thousand like, uh, right now. Because the yeah. the Rangers have good power for what they are. Also, I mean, it's it's a Ford name. It's going to be a hair bigger than the Frontier. The Tacomas are just known for reliability. They have an they have amazing aftermarket support. Uh, they're going to take a lot of your off roading crowd. Uh, they can you can also get up into like the TRD Pros and and a bunch of you know mm-hmm. higher end options that way um with the uh colorado and canyon they have diesel options i mean they do have the for now yeah for now the (laughs) nissan does have the i mean the i think what's been touted so far is the pro 4x model and now like the pre-runner version with the pro x model so they have their yeah they have their four-wheel drive with um electronic locking diff uh skid plates bilstein shocks stuff like that um all-terrain tires looks like a good little truck it that's what i'm saying it could be a good little truck like thousand dollars worth i think i think if anything it probably puts toyota in a spot where they finally have to update the tacoma 
because That's the under it's been like barely outside of, out, the, the yeah operators. outside of some facelift some facelifts in that motor like it's basically the same truck it's been for a long time yeah dustin say yeah. it with me if it ain't broke, broke don't, don't fix it, it. Toyota's just I agree taking, a, that, taking a page a from bit. Nissan's book. That's all. How many more years they got before they need to do an update? <coughs> I don't know. I need a new Tundra, uh, new uh, new model Tundra for Tacoma, though. That's what they need to come out with. Yeah, I, I think the, I think the, I think the Tacoma holds up well. It's it's aged well. I think it still looks fine. Um, the Nissan has needed an update for a while, but I think I mean for customers like me, since I'm pretty, uh, I don't have a favorite. If the Nissan's the right price, that's the one I'm buying. I was going to say, Dustin's just going to go look at all of them and get the best deal. Exactly. Because they're all, you know, they're all meh. So let me get the best value. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you got to have a little bit of passion about what you're paying for, Dustin. Uh, you know, it's different. You'll never it's, see. You, I mean, I how do you survive? Like in, how do you survive in like the owners groups? Because anybody that comes in and offers a slightly different opinion about why their truck is better than yours. <laughs> You just, you don't I'm even not, stand up for your... Well, I mean, Forrest knows this. Like, oh, you, uh, hey, I respect your opinion. That's good. Yeah. I just kind of like kind of agree with like that. I respect you not having an opinion. Dustin, <laughs> I've known Dustin Thanks, for like man. five that's years. All I wanted. And I think Dustin's <laughs> disagreed with me like twice. Yeah. It's like, okay, I see your, I see your side. Yeah. I got you. I respect, right. I respectfully disagree. Well, so, uh, wait I get see. this might be a good segue to talk about kind of what's behind us a little bit. So we have... Uh, uh, an F-150 here, 2018 F-150 that uh, we're going to be doing some work to. Well, we've never worked on one of those before. I know. <laughs> so we're going to be getting uh, some Icon suspension on it, some bumpers, wheels, tires, the the fixings. Yeah, so, I guess once we did, we got the Icon bug once we got that Tundra done. Mm-hmm. Rides great. Good kit. Good yeah. kit. So yeah, that'll, uh, <clears throat> that'll be pretty fun. But uh the our, our our next and last topic that that we'll kind of roll into is <clears throat> builds that you haven't done but you want to do or wish you would have done or might do in the future. Do you feel strongly uh, about this topic? Me, it? yes. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. All right, let's I do. Go ahead, go right, first. That's you start, and it's going to be different than you guys because I think of I think of builds that I used to love the look of when I didn't have like money or a job to yeah. actually do any of yeah. it. So there's like, like dream builds and I'm sure it's going to be really similar to what you guys do. False. It's not going to be at all. Uh, I'm thinking. I, I like, actually, with mine, I could potentially see some overlap, but is, is there a lowering kit involved with yeah. you? Oh, there is. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Got a surprise here today. He's on my team force. What are you going to do? No, anyways, um, <laughs> uh, to, uh, uh, to just either either truck there's there's two trucks in specifically and they're old trucks i could do it with newer trucks well couldn't really do it with newer trucks um a notch frame tacoma and just drop it to the floor okay uh obviously the older style I, I was looking at one of those before i bought the excursion i was looking for a uh a white i think it was 90 maybe 2099 tacoma something like that just the fact that you can buy a kit where you can chop the frame weld it and be done with it and it's like you're already laying frame um, another one, I uh, used to go to a show called Slamfest a lot. And this was probably when it was smaller. I think it's a pretty big show, right? At this point, Slamfest? Either y'all been? Don't know. That okay. Is, <laughs> you really don't know what Slamfest is? Is it a big show at this point? Does it still exist? I'm I not thought, sure that is. Okay, anyways, maybe maybe it was small and got big or was maybe. big and didn't exist anymore. But um, any uh, Chevy 1500, something like that, debadged, shaved on like 24-inch wheels tucked under the fenders, slammed on the floor. Hard tonneau cover. There is a lot of overlap. Hard hard tonneau cover. Between the two of us. Is there really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, we're, well, I'm thinking mini truck magazine days, you know, like lowered <clears throat> lowered trucks that are just like shaved clean and that's it. So Dustin, I hate to interrupt you real quick, but I think it was two episodes ago. We went over what we thought were the worst trucks of all time. I knew you were going to bring this up. Sure. I knew you were going to say the that. The truck that you just said is in your dream build, you also <laughs> listed as the top in the top three ugliest trucks of all time it in stock form was my was my fine print in stock form was my asterisk when he does have an opinion it always just bites him right back in the ass no because i'm thinking a tacoma <laughs> with the 14 inch steelies with like hubcaps over them that's the worst but truck. if you but if you <clears throat> slam it and you chop the frame in half it's automatically my dream build that well it happens you know 
Listen, a lot can be done to a vehicle with just wheels, tires, I and suspension. <clears throat> just wheels, tires, and suspension can change everything. But that's why I also threw in the Chevy in there because I knew you're going to bring up the, the Tacoma. I like the, the Chevy's better. The yeah. uh, I saw a twenty. This was I think it was a 2014 Chevy mm-hmm. when I saw this one at Slam Fest, and it was and that was when it was brand new. I think. Um, yeah, it was just it was one of the cleanest one of the cleanest Chevys I saw. Full cut through subwoofer system going through the bed, just full audio system, interior completely done up. It was just it was a nice setup. Let's hear yours, man. I can't wait. All right. Well, so I have. I mean, I, there there are two that I'd like to do still in my lifetime. And I bet you could guess that one of them is an off-road build. I would love to get an older, a hard body, an older Toyota, something like that that's just junky that I can straight axle swap and just hack the fenders off of and just put the biggest tire I can absolutely you know put on with zero lift or mild lift, coilovers or whatever. So there is definitely that. But the one that I always seem to come back to is a street build like single cab uh truck yeah. two-wheel drive so i mentioned on that earlier episode on the best and worst trucks one of my favorite or coolest trucks of all time is the second gen ford lightning the supercharged one mm. i don't i can't shake it i still love that truck I, there's it's one so in my neighborhood nice. and the guy's taking really really good care like of the, it bu- like the bubble body yeah, yeah, I know. It's not so nice. For, outside of the lightning though, it's not it's definitely not yeah. my favorite F one fifty. One of those in stock form? Worst truck ever. <laughs> I'll <laughs> drive it to Harry's. But when it's the lightning you know? with the bigger wheels, fills out the fit no, fills out spoiler. the uh the fenders are lowered a little bit. It's anyway, a, yeah. I, I'm not saying it would be a lightning, because I also tend to think of this build being a Chevy or GMC. Mm-hmm. And I'm not talking about as low as you're talking about where it's like you're tubbing it or anything like that. Airbag suspension for me. I like the bags. Uh, I would go with more of a kind of uh, something you could almost take to a track, like okay. more performance oriented. Okay. So not so low. Mm-hmm. Maybe, you know, it's obviously going to be a different wheel and package setup than the kind of thing that you're talking about. Like the Chevy SS is. But really I also nice also need it to have an obscene amount of power. Like I want like a giant okay. single turbo V8 yeah. or yeah, twin yeah. turbo V8. Yeah. Um, Cammed out. Yeah. yeah. That's where I would start and then build the rest of it. But f- yeah, I get by that. It's like, it's not me at all, but like I really a want 07, just an obscenely horse, uh, high horsepower, like single cab slam truck. Yeah. yeah. I like that. Huh. I'm a big fan. All right. I can get behind that. <sighs> For me, I want... I uh, might. <clears throat> I don't know if I'll ever do it. I'm having a baby now. It's probably not. But I want to diesel swap something. <laughs> I an Isuzu Amigo with a four BT. <laughs> I would. That's been widened I would by eight love inches. To get you like that? a. Uh, uh yeah. At the show. Yeah, yeah. I'd love to get like a, like a third, fourth gen Tacoma, base model, solid axle swap, and put a diesel in it. I would love. I would love that. That'd be so much fun. That'd be such a project. I'd have mm-hmm. so much ownership and pride in it. It'd be super fun to drive. Get a hood stack. <laughs> yeah, you can now, pull out of a Tacoma. How, so this time I ended up in the middle because yeah, I kind of I'm right I'm with you on that, and I'm also with Dustin on the, the yeah. street performance thing. I love the 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 old diesels. You know, if you just swap like a like a Cummins four BT. It, all you need is a black and a red wire and <laughs> something that has something that burns. You know what's super popular for <clears throat> stuff like that are the uh, older VW yes. turbo yep. diesels. Yeah, yeah, the two point I remember looking at those for the uh, my old Samurai because that was a popular yeah. swap. Yeah, there you, go. you still only have 60, 65 horsepower, but you double or triple the amount of torque. Or mm-hmm. Way back when, uh, before the Gladiator, I was absolutely obsessed with the idea of getting a J uh, uh, a Wrangler JK. <coughs> And doing a diesel swap in it and making it real big. And then that's when uh, bruiser conversions and a few others are really big. And you could like get the custom bed or just like chop it and stretch the frame. I thought that was the coolest freaking thing. Spray was a bed liner. Like that was the coolest thing you could drive. I, I was in love with those. And I had a JK <clears throat> and that was probably the closest I ever got. But uh, there's a few companies out there that sell complete kits with uh, transmission plates that just bolt that you could just bolt right up 
and comes with the harness and everything comes with the motor mounts all you need is the engine you need a lot of expensive a tools of and a nice welder for that yeah <clears throat> yeah and a lot of time patience space yeah that 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 project is definitely over my head but i mean if it's a dream project then that would yeah, be that would be a lot of fun that'd be a lot that'd be a lot of fun and then on a lot of those older diesels too like if you get like the uh the v dubs or the the four bts the mercedes diesels whatever all those can be converted to uh biodiesel hmm. super easily yeah and then you're running off of like like used vegetable oil old motor oil like whatever is I that still that so cool. <clears throat> i remember when like that whole thing like the whole bio biodiesel thing started and it's like you can get your kit and you can get oil for free from restaurants yeah. and then it was like well now everybody wants this free oil so it, it's like going to other people and you have to buy it now yeah. and then it was like is it really worth it i mean so it was like it was hyped regular, up for a while you can still and I run regular diesel right so. i just don't know if people are really yeah, still doing that anymore it yeah because i can imagine for a normal <clears throat> i can imagine for a normal person it'd be just be mad inconvenient speaking of that build uh my stepbrother who went to school for engineering had a uh cherokee yeah. and he had a mercedes 300d diesel in there running on biofuel Oh, I think cool. that was like his thesis for for school. Like that was his that, that was his be, project that he had. Actually, just want a three hundred D. What's that? I actually, just want the original it's Mercedes. Same. Just as, yeah. as like same. a daily. That thing's great. But yeah, this thing. I'm, I remember seeing it once, and this thing was, it was incredible. But aside from just the solid axle swap, I'd love to like kind of like Chris was saying, be able to do a solid axle swap on a Tacoma and stuff. You put like a like a Dana sixty under a Tacoma, and you put tires on it, and they're outside of the fender. <laughs> That's the best. So look. your limit, it, your limit on tire size is when it kisses the headlight when you turn yeah like that <laughs> yeah, yeah. like that's what i like yep yeah the engine can hardly keep up pushing those tires but i should be i'm sure it'd be like all over the road like super hard to control but it'd be really fun oh well, you gotta go hydro steering with at that point yeah. anyway yeah. so it just get real expensive and if you don't go expensive if you go cheap it's just real dangerous oh but yeah no th that's absolutely a project i it's funny because we were talking about this I was talking about this with Ann the other day. I'm like, I want a project that's going to sit unfinished in the backyard for like eight or nine years. And both of what I just outlined, like the street or the, the off-road yeah. thing, would sit back there for eight or nine years. <laughs> as I, Because it's like, I don't even have the, like I have a 120 volt welder. So I couldn't even start building yeah. suspension components. So it's like, mm -hmm. there's just way too much. But I want the like truck those, and I just want to park it. Even on like those old Tacomas, it's like the old Tacoma, not really like that expensive. You can go get those old diesel engines not that expensive yeah. parts for it not that expensive it's all the other stuff oh then you it's need all the custom fabrication axles aren't that axles aren't that cheap especially when you start to build them and if then, you can do it yourself yeah and then and then it's all just the custom fab stuff and then just all the tool well, you, the, the amount of money that you would have to invest in equipment and tools <laughs> would be what you invest yeah. in the well, that's truck. why i just want to get the truck cut everything off of it then it's stuck there forever. And I can't sits. sell it. Yeah. No one wants it. And it's yeah. then I'll have to then I have to yeah. dream. And then you sell it for a loss in like two years. <laughs> <laughs> hustling all but you're right. Yeah. I mean, the, it's basically when you're ready to to really start putting it together, when you are starting to look at your coilover kits, your wheels and tires, and it's like, well, your two thousand dollar truck and motor just turned into, you know, a ten thousand dollar budget. Yeah. Just in parts. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then you need to buy like twenty five hundred dollar tires. Well, that's have, including that in the number, yeah. but yeah, adds up quick. But can we convince Real Truck to do one of those? Let's go for it. That'd be real fun. That'd be real fun. Yeah, absolutely. Just have Clay build the whole thing, though, since he'd be the only yeah, one. Yeah, he'd be he, the only one yeah. competent enough yeah, to actually say, "Hey, can you do real this there? Fa real fabrication." That'd be that'd be real fun. That'd be a fun uh, series. I don't think uh, you know we sell anything for uh, Mercedes three hundred D diesels, <laughs> <laughs> but. Well, Dustin's the really performance fun. guy, so yeah. we'll start, I'll start selling the swap kits out there. Yeah, I'm sure there's a swap. Well, kit hey, for we could do, we we could do the um, uh, the Cummins 2.8 crate that they're doing now. I don't even know about that. Oh, like Cummins sells a 2.8 liter turbo diesel crate motor, really, with swap kits for like TJs and oh um, wow, really? other things. Yeah. How much is so that? it's not your two wire and fuel and it runs <laughs> yeah, motor because it's got, it's, got, it's got all the emission stuff on it. Fooey, we don't need that. <laughs> no. But uh, that's why I didn't include engine swap in my in my plans because I feel like I'm going to have to engine swap the, the LJ at some point anyway. When so I was, I'll get that out from... Uh, the LJ belt. would be a real good candidate for an engine swap. Before when I was looking at it, you can go get like uh, four BTs out of uh, old bread trucks for <laughs> like 400 bucks. Like real cheap. I, I, I'm going to go get one as a garage ornament. Yeah. 
Also, I've never actually, <coughs> I've torn the engine some, but I've never actually like completely rebuilt one. That would probably be a really fun engine to do because they're really simplistic and like, you know, pretty straightforward. Um, but I feel like that would be a cool one to actually like clean up, rebuild, and then install. That'd be a really cool one to, yeah. you know, and then it would just kind of be a garage ornament for a while, like torn apart. Yeah, worst case, just put it in a go-kart. Something like that. Be Jesus. Yeah, it would just be rattling your teeth. <laughs> That's what people say, though, when you put uh, even those four BTs in, uh, in Jeeps is like, it hurts your kidneys. <laughs> like it shakes you to death because it's not. That's funny because I feel like my kidneys get pretty well beat up riding around in that thing anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Just the next step. Just, just a little like back massage. Or like, <laughs> <laughs> All righty. That's probably going to do it for us today. So thanks for watching episode 10. Make sure you comment on YouTube, iTunes, Spotify, wherever you're watching this and let us know what your dream build is. And if you think we should do one, we'll see you on episode 11. Thanks.